Hey guys, um, again, since I'm not here today, I kind of want to give you a video um, instructing you a little bit on how to deal with graphing um, your systems and dealing with um, solving these systems algebraically. Again, your solutions, possibilities are two solutions, one solution, or no solution, um, and they should always be set up in a point format. So you should have an X and a Y value at the end of these. Okay? Graphically, um, usually they're going to give you one that's in a quadratic form format and one that's kind of a linear. They could give you both quadratic, um, and that would be okay. We'd be able to figure that out. Um, but usually we get one linear here. Okay? The linear one is normally the easier one to start with. This has no like y-intercept, so I'm going to plug a zero in. That tells me that's going to be my first point. My slope is negative 1 over 1, so it tells me to go down 1 to the right one. Again, you continue this pattern the entire way. Um, I'll kind of do it a couple spots here, and then if I need to add in a couple more, then I will in just a little bit. Okay. So I've got my line here. Again, that linear one hopefully is not the difficult part or difficult piece of this process. The top one here is where we're going to get it into a vertex form. Um, so this is our completing the square. We spent quite a bit of time on this, so hopefully this one's not too bad. So we have our x squared plus 10x plus 28 equals 0. This is not a perfect square, so I'd move the 28 over to the other side. Our 10 is our middle term, so we divide it by 2. Square that thing, so this will get you 5 squared, which is 25. So we add 25 to both sides. The left side, again, the goal here is to get that uh, perfect square here. So I have x plus 5 squared equals negative 3. We want to move everything over to the left side to get our final kind of equation. So I have f of x equals x plus 5 squared plus 3. Okay. Our goal when we get our vertex out of this, so my vertex again is opposite of whatever's in my parentheses. And then my k value comes down, so I have negative 5, 3, we know ends up being my vertex. Okay. We also know from our equation that this thing's going to be curving up. There's no a value, so this thing's going to follow kind of our parent function um, of our quadratics. So I'd go to negative 5, positive 3, so negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put my dot here. I'm going to have to kind of increase the size of this thing a little bit further this way um, as I go through this. Um, so I got negative 5, 3. Again, our normal format with a parent function is we have our 0, 0. Each thing is squared, so it would be like 1 squared gets me 1, so that's how far up I go. 2 squared is 4, so I go over 2, up 4. It's the mirror image on the other side. So from this dot right here, my vertex, again, it's positive. There's no A value, so I know this is going to be going to the right one, up one. So I have my dot here. So yes, I do know one of my points is going to cross right there. To the right two, up four. So from this spot, I'm going to go to the right two. And I'm going to go up four spaces, one, two, three, four. And I'll put a dot right over there. I should do the same thing over here. So to the left two, again, from my original vertex, up four. So one two, three, four. So we're going to be right up here. If I continue on with my dots here, this ends up hitting up or hitting that exact spot as well. So I would have two spots or two solutions for this graph. Okay. Graphically then you can kind of see visually where those two things intersect. Again, are going to be your solutions. They should always be a point. So for this one, I would be at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 4, positive 4 is one point. My other point over here is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 7. So it would be negative 7, 7. And those would be my two points um, that are my solutions for this problem. Okay. Again, you could also solve this um, algebraically. With this type of problem, when they're both set equal to y, you'd be able to just plug this negative x in right here, move it over to the other side, and solve. Again, that's completely um, your choice. When they ask you graphically to solve it, um, when they ask you to solve it graphically or graph it, this is what you're expected to do. If they're asking you to do it algebraically, that would be your setup. You would just plug this negative x in for your y. Okay. I'm gonna move the desk over here so you can see the other one. Um, this is one that we're gonna solve algebraically. For a ride. All right, 
So for this one, when we're solving it algebraically, we're kind of looking for a variable that's all by itself. Whatever variable is by itself, we're going to substitute into the other equation. So in this case, I have my y completely by itself. So I'm going to plug whatever y is equal to in for the y in the other problem. Okay? So, and this is just like our Algebra 1 stuff when we did systems. So I'm going to plug that in. So I'd have 4x minus, this time I'm going to put the parentheses around it. Um, the reason is I have a negative in front. So that means essentially I'm going to have to distribute that negative through everything inside of my parentheses. So I'm going to have my x squared plus 8x plus 7 equals the negative 3. So again, here because there's a minus in front of that y, I'm going to distribute essentially a negative 1 into my parentheses. If this was a positive, like a plus there, I wouldn't have to change anything. I could leave it all positive. It wouldn't make a difference. Okay. So here I'm going to simplify this out. I would have negative x squared minus 8x minus 7 equals negative 3. Okay. Again, we want our a value to be positive if we can. So I'm going to move everything over to the right side of the equation and set it equal to zero that way. Okay. So here, if I do that, I move this over. So I'd have on the right side, then I would end up with x squared. This would get me negative 4x together, add it to the other side. So I get positive 4x, add 7 over to the other side. So I get positive 4 and equal to zero. Okay. So again, I combine the 4x and the negative 8x gets me negative 4, add it to the other side, so I got positive 4x, add the x squared to the other side, add the 7 to the other side, so we get our 4. At this point, our goal is to figure out what our x is. Okay? So we're not trying to write this in a vertex form because we don't have to graph this. So this is one where you can choose. Um, in the past, we had those four different methods um, for solving a quadratic. Um, some are much quicker than others. So we had our um, factoring, um, which can be extremely quick. Um, we had our um, perfect squares um, or square root property. Our square root property is one that only worked if you didn't really have a B value. So this one wouldn't really work for this one. Um, we also had um, our completing the square, which again works if there's not factoring. And our quadratic formula, which will work for everything, but can take a little bit longer. So for this one, if I look at it, my 4 here is one that, hey, I can't actually factor. This one's not too bad. Um, if I list the factors of 4, we have 1 and 4, 2 and 2. 1 and 4 don't get my middle term, but 2 plus 2 does. So I know 2 and 2 are my factors. So I'd have x plus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. Because these are both identical, I really need to do one equation. So I end up figuring out that x equals negative 2. I don't need to write it twice, because both of these would give me the same thing. If I did the same problem over here, it would also give me x equals negative 2. So there's no difference there. Again, my answer has to be a point with an x and a y value. So if I'm going to do that, I need to take this and plug it back into one of my problems. Okay. So you choose whichever one you would like to plug it in. Your goal is to get your y value. Some of you will say, yep, this one's way easier. Some of you will say this one's easier. It's completely up to you which one you plug it back into and solve. Okay. Um, I'm going to plug it back into the one that's not a quadratic, mainly because I don't want to deal with that square. Okay, so if I do so, and again, that's your choice completely, so don't, you can kind of pick and choose which one you like. Um, so when I plug this thing back in, I'm going to do 4, replacing the x with the negative 2, minus y equals negative 3. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Here, then I'm going to add the 8 to the other side. Divide by negative 1. So we get y equals negative 5. So I have my point then, or my solution, of where these two, if I was going to graph this out, they would only hit at one point. I have my solution of where this system um, is kind of solved, or where those two things cross. Okay? So this is the set where those two things actually equal each other, is at negative 2, negative 5. Okay? Again, hopefully this helps you. This is the algebraic way to solve it. We also talked about the graphing way to solve it. These are the two ways we're going to deal with this. Again, next week we're going to start dealing with the application of these, which means, again, you'll be able to um, use both methods um, within real-life kind of scenarios. Okay? Again, hopefully this uh, helps a little bit. Uh, Monday we'll continue kind of working with this, and you guys can ask some more questions then. All right. See you guys soon.